Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Restoring Hope with Crosswinds Counseling. I'm your host, Curtis Smith. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for our first April show. It's great to have you with us. I would be remiss if I didn't thank our incredible community partners, Tesco, Prime 47 Downtown, and Shepherd Community Center. Those wonderful organizations make it possible for us to be here every week. And of course, our friends here at WHMB TV 40 as well. Tonight, we start by welcoming our first guest, Rachel Lair. Rachel is the Boone County Center Director for Life Centers. Rachel, let's talk about your work there, an incredible organization. What do you do at Life Centers and, and how are you changing lives in Boone County? So yeah, I am the director there. So I get to help oversee um, not only client interactions, but also um, the volunteers that we have there. We have a small crew, but very faithful. Um, so it's really awesome to just get to provide diapers and clothes and wipes and things like that to parents in need in that community, while also offering um, a safe place for them to come and either find out about their pregnancy and their options, um, and then also just to be heard and to be felt seen and known and all of that. So yeah. it's really a great experience to be able to have. Life Centers does such amazing work and has been such a good friend with Crosswinds Counseling. Mm -hmm. But it is Crosswinds Counseling I want to mainly talk to you about because for a little while now, you have been a client. You mm -hmm. have seen a counselor through Crosswinds. Why did you start seeing a Crosswinds Counselor? So I think mental health and um, the importance of that has always been something really close to my heart. Um, I've struggled with depression for a number of years, but especially being in a position like I am at the center, like we see a lot of really hard stories and it, the years just kind of pile on with that. And so there's just sometimes a lot of heaviness. And when you're dealing with your own depression and own heaviness, it's sometimes hard to take on that of others. And it's one thing to say, I have to leave it at the feet of Jesus, but it's really hard to actually practically do that. Um, so when my uh, when Life Setters started offering that partnership, I jumped on board with that because I knew that having somebody to talk to and to process through things and process through the difficult things of life um, was something really important so that I could be able to be there for my clients and for my volunteers. I know that step can be a big one and a difficult one for a lot of people, but it mm -hmm. sounds like for you, you knew right away when the partnership was formed, you wanted to, to link up with a Crosswinds counselor. Mm -hmm. uh, was it a challenge at all to think of it? Was there a stumbling block or hurdle to overcome with this idea of, I'm gonna actually see a counselor? I don't think this time around, I went to a counselor for the first time when I was in college and that was a big, um, that was a big challenge for mm -hmm. me. Um, just because there's a lot of misconceptions of what counseling looked like that right. I grew up with. It was very much a lot of, um, oh, well, I'm just not being a good enough Christian and I should just read more, pray more um, to get out of my depression and not realizing like, you know, God put us in community and community can also look like counseling. Um, so back in college, it took me a while to get to there, but I've grown enough to realize that um, yeah, it wasn't as big of a jump this time around, yeah. so, yeah. And what has the experience been like? You've been seeing your counselor now for not quite a year. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that experience, the, these past months of, of being engaged with Crosswinds Counseling. How has it helped? How has it gone for you? It's gone really well. I really um, appreciated it a lot to be able to meet with my counselor and to process through. There's just, it's been a rough couple of months. And so just being able to process through things going on in my own personal life and then also um, just it's Indiana and the winter can grow old and... <laughs> I think we all know that, yes. <laughs> yeah, and so being able to process through things with her and having a safe place to be able... Um, to be honest and to be real and to have somebody outside of my own head um, to help me through those things has been a huge blessing and has mm -hmm. really helped me get through hard things that um, I know God could have gotten me through, but he uses people to get us through things. I think that's such an important point. You, you made it almost a couple of times here about sometimes we think being a Christian means mm -hmm. I just need to rely on God, but Relying on God often means God's going to use other people to get you through this season, and that's mm -hmm. what you. it sounds like you're experiencing right yeah. now. Yeah, yep, for sure. That is awesome. <laughs> Tell me about the impact on your work, because you mm -hmm. said at work, Life Centers, you're dealing with stuff uh, that is taxing, mm -hmm. and there's a lot to it. So being present for them, mm -hmm. 
really is assisted by taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that play out in your work? Oh yeah, because um, there are times where you know we all have things um, in our past and different things like that where a client might say something and it's triggering. And so if you're not working through actively healing from those things, then it's really easy to react in a way that might shut that client down or might cause her to not feel safe just because you're not reacting to necessarily her situation. You're reacting to the trigger in your own life. Mm. Um, but being able to realize, you know, like, okay, I'm not reacting to her. Like that's not, I don't need to put that on her. And so then later, no, I can go and process that out with my counselor has been really helpful um, so that I can still create that safe place for her without bringing my own junk into the situation, <laughs> per se. So. It feels brave to me that you're here uh, in front of cameras, <laughs> under the lights, sharing <laughs> your story of going through counseling. Do you feel brave? Do you feel courageous to talk about this? <laughs> I mean, I guess maybe a little bit, but um, no, not, I mean, I feel, I feel like it's something that has been really dear to my heart. And I think it's something that God's really put on my heart in the fact that just to break out of that stigma of, um, oh, counseling is like the last cho choice or if you're absolutely like falling apart and stuff like that. Because when I started, like I just knew I needed that kind of buffer, that bumper um, along the way. So um, just to kind of break out of that stigma, I think, is important. And um, just to be able to bring hope and encouragement to others that um, to step out and it's not so terrifying. It's like having a friend mm. that has training and understands how to help you process things that, you know, you can just swim around in your head or you can get it out and help process through it with somebody who has training for that. And it's beautifully said, and, and somebody out there probably needed to hear that. So, mm -hmm. Rachel, thank you. Whether you think you're brave or not, I, <laughs> I thank you for your bravery and sharing your story and, and connecting with other people around the idea of getting counseling. Thanks for being here. No problem. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Tonight, we're privileged to be joined by two great organizational leaders. Here with us now is Erica Sanders, the founder and executive director of You, Yes You Project. Erica, that is a unique name. Thank you. Tell me about You, Yes You Project. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for having me. So yeah, excited to be here. You, Yes You Project is an organization that focuses on connecting incarcerated fathers with their children. Mm. So our mission is exactly that, is to help uh, incarcerated fathers um, stay connected with their kids. And we do that by organizing activities inside prison facilities. We also provide each of our fathers with pre-release plans to help them have a successful re-entry. And we also engage with their families during incarceration and after incarceration. What caused you to start this work? I mean, there are so many different segments of population that need help. This is a pretty specific segment. Mm -hmm. What caused you to want to help them? Well, two things. Um, one, I grew up without my dad. So I often describe myself as a daddy's girl without a dad. Mm. So I intimately understand what it's like to try to navigate life without your dad. But I also understand that from a dad's perspective, oftentimes it isn't that you don't want to be a great dad, but maybe you just don't know how to be a great dad. And so I wanted to offer the opportunity um, for incarcerated fathers to connect with their children because oftentimes incarcerated dads don't get the same empathy, the same support, the same attention as uh, incarcerated mothers get, mm -hmm. but kids need mom and they need dad. Tell me about that. Growing up without a dad, what was that like for you? Um, difficult. Um, it's, it's sort of like... Um, you know that you have a, a big part of you, and it's not that it's, that it's missing, it's that it's there, but you just don't know much hmm. about it, right? Um, and so you're missing so much of who you are, you know, your personality, you know, what you laugh like. Um, you also miss a father's um, 
hand and, and teaching and, and whether it's about boys or it's about friendship or about school, you're missing such a, a big part of, of who you are. Um, and that was the case for me. My dad um, unfortunately passed away in May of 2019. And so our, even though our relationship was complicated, I also knew that my dad loved me, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's a weird feeling trying to navigate knowing that a piece is missing, but the piece is missing, you know that, it, that they love you, yeah. right? Um, so one of the things that we do with You, Yes, You Project is share that with our dads and encourage them and inspire them to let their kids know, you know who they are and, and why they made the decisions that they make because it all sort of comes full circle for us. And how is that going? Are you seeing a tremendous impact in the lives of the men you're helping and their families? Absolutely. So we have we started as a one-off father-daughter dance in 2014. Okay. And what happened from that dance was we saw that there was a greater need beyond the dance. Mm. So we saw that in, if we wanted to connect fathers with their children, we first had to connect dads with resources. Um, so that's one of the biggest things. Um, so we have grown tremendously from a father-daughter dance to an organization, and we are currently in two facilities in Indiana. We are at Putnamville Correctional Facility, and we just started at Plainfield Correctional Facility. Wow. So we are able to, uh, we've been able to expand um, and help more fathers and help more families. Um, Commissioner Rob Carter, who's over at the Department of Correction, is a member of our board. Mm -hmm. um, so that just says to the community and to our supporters and our funders that we are serious about our work um, and we're serious about our growth. And about how many men and families are you serving? Yep, so currently in our 2022 cohort at Putnamville, we have 25 fathers in our cohort. Uh, and at um, Plainfield, we have 19. Wow. And between both of those cohorts, we're looking at about 110 children. Um, Goodness. So even though I try to explain to people that even though the numbers might look small with the fathers that we help, but if you look at it in terms of family impact, then you can see the greater impact of the work that we're doing. That's a tremendous uh, a number of kids whose lives you can greatly impact. Tell me about the name, too, You, Yes, You Project. Uh, I mentioned it right at the top. It's a unique name. Mm -hmm. Why did you name it that? What does it mean? So the big part uh, for You, Yes, You is the exclamation point after the last you. Mm. So the idea that if I walk in the room with you and, I, and you say to me, I'm just not quite sure if I can be a good host, then my job is to say you, Yes, you can absolutely be a great host. So that's our that's our motto. That's how we talk with our fathers. That's how we talk with our kids. There's nothing that you can't do. So of course, you, yes, you can accomplish anything. I love that. You just generally seem to ooze positivity. Mm -hmm. you, you're, you're a bright person the second you walked into the room, you're shaking everybody's hand and you just lit up the room. Mm -hmm. Where do you get that positive energy from? You know, my dad, you know? Um, really? Absolutely. So one of my favorite things currently about the work that I'm doing with You Yes Shu is learning more about fathers and, and fatherhoods. And my dad was a car salesman. And so my dad um, was like the life of the party as well. <laughs> um, so what I'm learning to do is take some of that personality that my dad had and using it in my own way. So realizing that in all of the ways that I am like my dad, and even though he has passed away, it makes me happy. Uh, it makes me joyful and it lets me know that even though he's not here, and even though our relationship was complicated, what's gonna live on forever is what you just described, the exuberance and the joy yeah. um, that my dad had for life and that I wanna pour into all of our family. So I can't help but to be excited about the work. That is wonderful. For people who want to know more about your organization, how can they find out more? What's your website? How can they get engaged with the work you're doing? Absolutely. So our website is youyesuproject.com. Uh, they can um, find me on there. Um, there's a donate button on there as well. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook, you, yes, you Project, and Instagram as well, where we share um, fatherhood updates so you get to learn about our fathers and our families, um, about our initiatives, and also key. Um, information and data about families and how in, how incarceration has impacted their lives. Tremendous. Erica, thank you so much thank you. for all the work that you're doing in our communities and thank you for being with us tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. 
We'll be right back. Welcome back to Restoring Hope with Crosswinds Counseling. Each week, we take a few moments to talk about hope and share thoughts from one of our leaders from God's Word. Tonight, Crosswinds Executive Gordon Haynes is back with us to share his thoughts on how we can work on the relationships in our life. Hi, my name's Gordon. I'm a member of the Crosswinds Executive Team. You know, today, what I want to talk about is relationships. Did you know that relationships take work? Did you know that they're not always perfect? I get to spend time uh, counseling young married couples and I get to do some premarital counseling. And this is what I tell couples about how do you have a successful relationship? Um, I've been married for 37 years. I don't know if that's success or not, but I gauge it as some level of success. This is what I tell people. I find that the common thread of all successful couples is the husband is consistently focused on how do I make my wife happy? And the wife is consistently focused on how do I make my husband happy? And when they're in that mode, their relationship is really good. Where the relationship starts having issues is when the husband or wife goes, well, my partner's not making me happy. So when they turn their focus from the other to themselves, that's when they start having issues. Funny how that is, when we start getting self-centered, we have issues. I tell people my uh, focus as a husband is based on the movie 50 First Dates. If you've never seen it, you should go see it. It's kind of a corny movie, but the theme of the movie is every day the main character is focused on how do I make this other person fall in love with me today? And I'm gonna tell you that if you focus on your marriage with that attitude, of how do I ensure my spouse falls in love with me again today, you will have a great relationship. And when you have that solid relationship at home and that solid marriage in place, the rest of life and the challenges that exist outside of that are much easier because you have a Christ-centered marriage where you love each other and that is a source of great hope and strength when you go out to do battle with this tumultuous world we live in. Thanks, Gordon. Great reminders, as always. It's time for our Counseling Corner segment, and Laura Friedrich is here to talk about one of the biggest motivators behind people going to counseling, trauma. Hi, my name's Laura Friedrich, and I'm a social worker who works as a therapist with Crosswinds Counseling. Today, I just would like to spend a few minutes talking to you about trauma. The most conservative estimates are that about half of all of Americans have at least one traumatic event sometime in their lifetime. And really, the other evidence is that it might be as high as 70%. That means all of us are impacted by trauma, either directly or indirectly. Trauma at base is really just when our internal resources aren't adequate to deal with external stimulus. We become overwhelmed and our behavior becomes mm, maybe unpredictable or unmanageable. Trauma affects us for the rest of our life in one way or another. The sanctuary model of trauma-informed care suggests that everybody needs a safety plan, not just kids who are acting out or people who can identify what's going on with their mental health needs, but all of us have times when we need to recenter and refocus in order to have the most productive behavior. Safety plans should be short and sweet. My safety plan is just five items long. So when I start to feel a triggered behavior or something that I haven't resolved, I might watch the fish in my fish tank swim back and forth or go outside. The temperature helps me recenter and refocus. Your safety plan are things that are quick, your go-to, things that help you get back in the moment. Some people keep them on the back of their name badge. Some people keep them pinned in front of their desk, but they should be there so that you can consult them easily. Using these tips will help you be resilient, problem solvers, and they'll help you model this behavior for the people that you suggest use a safety plan. Long term, people are better off when they develop a self-care plan. 
A self-care plan tends to be future-oriented, not just in the moment, and it intends to be broader. It includes things like professional, personal, organizational, and community development. So just real quick to recap, safety plans are a cool tool. They help us stay focused and resilient and to really manage our triggered and unrecognized behavior that trauma someplace has pinched at or provoked. Developing a safety plan keeps you safe, it keeps the people around you safe. Welcome back. As we wind down tonight, I want to let you know that Crosswinds Counseling needs help. Like just about everybody else in the world right now, we're looking for skilled and caring people to work at Crosswinds Counseling. We need women and men who want to invest into the lives of others and help them when they need it most. You can check out all of the career opportunities at crosswindscounseling.org careers. If you know a qualified counselor or therapist and feel like they would be a great fit, please let them know about Crosswinds. Again, the website is crosswindscounseling.org careers. The need for counselors has never been higher than it is right now. As we wrap up tonight, thanks again to our partners in bringing you Restoring Hope with Crosswinds Counseling, Tesco, Shepherd Community Center, and Prime 47 downtown. And thanks to all of you for spending part of your Thursday evening with us. We appreciate it so much. We'll see you right back here next Thursday night on WHMB TV 40, Thursday nights, 930. Until then, stay safe and be blessed.